Hey everybody, Dr. Fred DiDomenico from Elite Coaching, and I am here today because we're having an amazing seminar, June 4th and 5th in Denver, and I'm really, 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 that's three really excited for a number of reasons to have Rick Sapio here, number one, because your expertise, what you're doing in the world, how you change people's lives, and how you're creating hundreds and hundreds, I think it's a million entrepreneurs, uh, successful entrepreneurs around the world, well, let's get one of the most important reasons, fellow Italian brother. <laughs> let's talk about what really matters. Another Italian brother. You got a big family of Italians, and uh, we're excited to have you in our seminar in Denver. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it, brother. Yeah. So, hey, you're going to, well, you have so much expertise. I think you get like an hour and a half. So, so you know, I mean, there, you have wealth of information to share, but what you're going to share in that time is Purpose 2.0 how to amplify time, results, and success. And uh, before I say that, I wanna say one thing. I'm in business finishing school with you. It's been amazing. I love the videos. It's definitely changed uh, what we do in Elite. And uh, I really think that everybody in the seminar, if you're not in business finishing school, you really need to be in it. Chiropractors are artists, but we haven't really uh, been always known for being the best entrepreneurs. When we're a great entrepreneur, then we get the opportunity to be a great artist and a great healer. So thanks for being there. Give us a little bit about what you're going to talk about. Well, you know, let's start with what you just said. Entrepreneurs, in my view, are the most fulfilled people in the world. And those are the ones that are successful, right? But if you're not successful, it's hard to be fulfilled. So I think that entrepreneurs that are operating on all cylinders, that have cleaned all the gunk out of their life, that embrace three operating principles that I stand for, which are simplicity, probability, and leverage. And let me just spend a second defining those. Um, uh, simplicity is there's always a simpler way to do everything, a simpler way to live our life. Just start with your personal life. I mean, people add so much chaos to their personal life. They've got to have every app and their kid has to play every sport and they have to be involved in everything. And you apply that thinking to their business and they're just not embracing an operating principle called simplicity. Probability is another one. Operating principle, which we're going to talk about, uh, is when I think about a successful business, I think about a business that is growing, profitable, enduring, and saleable. And that doesn't mean that you have to sell it today, tomorrow, or 10 years from now, but it has to be a saleable entity that somebody would write a check for right. at some point. So what I want to teach people is how to increase the probability that you're building a saleable entity. And then the last thing is uh, leverage. And Sorry about that. Gonna that's all right, Fred. Go ahead. So we're okay. going to go for a ride in your office. Yeah. What's happening there? That's my fax machine going off. Man, you still get faxes? I know. Can you believe it? <laughs> um, my apologies. Th thanks for moving us. Yeah. So, so the, the last thing is leverage. So here's the thing. There are always higher probability ways and simpler ways to leverage yourself through other people and other entities. And every chiropractor needs to think like that. So if you can embrace the operating principles of simplicity, probability, and leverage, which we're going to talk a lot about, uh, as a starting point to then learn the foundational principles of business, which are built on top of that operating uh, principle and those values that I just mentioned, then you can have it all. So when I say have it all, I, I want you to be fulfilled. And fulfilled, again, is making money and having ease in your life, not chaos like most people have. Well, and I want to say that's uh, one of the things that I really like. Well, obviously, business finishing school is really a reflection of your beliefs. And I think one of the most powerful things that you do is, is exactly what you talk about. You help people get organized in their personal life because as an entrepreneur, you know, if your personal life is chaotic, your business you can't be fulfilled in your business. So you have so much advice on how to get people to have better focus, laser sharp focus in their personal habits because mm -hmm. they definitely bleed over into their business. Mm -hmm. And so and you, and another great thing is you live what you preach. You know, there's people out there that tell you what to do, but they don't live it. It's in your beingness. So your message is pure. It comes from your heart. Uh, another thing that I love about you is you, you love people. It's really, it's not 
I mean, business finishing school is about creating a great business, but you help also create great people that then again, create great business. Well, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you saying that and noticing that. You know, I've been through a lot in my life. I'm 52 now, and uh, we've invested in 111 companies. And in order to do that, um, well, just let me back up a step and say what that, what that really means. Uh, I started a holding company 22 years ago uh, after being a partner in a, in, a, in a firm that invested in businesses. So I started this holding company 22 years ago. It's the only job I ever had after I left my partnership. And we look at a lot of different businesses. So when you're investing in 111 businesses, before we write a check, we normally look at 100 to 200. And some of them we go deep in and some of them we don't. But the fact of the matter is I've, I've seen thousands of companies. And so a lot of the things that I've learned, I've learned from watching other people make mistakes and watching myself make mistakes. Um, I started my first company when I was 13. And uh, what was that? 39 years, almost 40 years ago. Wow. So what my motivating, uh, I, I would say the thing that motivates me the most is the fact that I don't like watching people make the same mistakes I made or watching people make the same mistakes that uh, others have made. And so you've heard it for many times, but I say people don't often make the same mistake twice. They make it 20 or 30 times. Right. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. Stop <laughs> it. Stop. So, so if I could just get you to stop making mistakes, and those mistakes are big, who you hire, who you marry, who you partner with, who you bring into your practice that causes a lawsuit, if you could get those key mistakes out of your life by using – the operating principles that we talk about in the program. So you got the three main ones that I mentioned, but you also have values-based decision-making. How to use a set of values from which to make all important decisions, things like that. And why do you want to do business this way? Because you want to avoid the catastrophic mistakes that eventually sink almost every business. And that's what it's all about, downside protection in addition to creating an upside. Well, I think you just hit, I mean, there's so many things that, that you say, I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's it, that's it. But you think about when, as a person goes through life, not just in business, but in their personal life, man, if you could just cut the fat on all this stuff, really, you help people figure out who they are. And then with those core values, because everything's like you said, value-based decision making is all about core values, exactly what we teach. I mean, you know, what you teach in business finishing school exactly aligns with what we teach in elite. And, uh, you know, you think about, oh my God, man, all our personal relationships, all our stuff. If we would have had a focused path, where would we be? Well, we learn from those things, but, but now let's be done. Now let's get laser sharp focused. And now let's really do, uh, what we believe our vision is and what we're fulfilled to do. So I think business finishing school, is uh, an awesome vehicle, and there's so much more we could go about. Sorry to do all the talking, uh, and I'm really excited to have you there, man, because you're going to bring so much value. Um, you know, we have, we have a bunch of other leaders, but and definitely you are you're a top dog uh, on a on a global scale. So I really am appreciative that you're going to be there. Well, thanks for the invitation, and I only get on a plane twice a year to speak. So you took half my speaking gigs this year. Dang. So. <laughs> we'll have to go out for some Italian food. I don't know if they are in Denver. Maybe we'll just have to get a good steak instead. I'm but, sure that there, there is. There's good food everywhere. We're spoiled. <laughs> yeah. Any final words of uh, inspiration or anything? Well, I, I just like to ask people, you know, why do they make success so difficult? Uh, you know, I'm going to teach you some very, very simple things and you'll hear some simple things from other people. But the fact of the matter is at some point you have to make a decision. You have to decide from this point forward, I'm going to make my life simple. I'm going to cut out drama in my life. I'm going to eliminate family members and friends and employees and clients and patients that cause me grief. I'm going to focus on the positives. And the first step is for you to make a decision to cut the crap and gunk out of your business and out of your personal life. If you don't do that, then how do you fit success into a container that's already full? And for the most part, it's full of crap. And so, you know, a lot of what I teach is to get you to, you know, take a step forward. So let me give you a really, really big example. About once every four or five years, my wife and I will sit down 
and we'll say, who are the couples that we want to hang out with? And we do a lot of dinner parties and we have a lot of close couple friends and are people we want to aspire to be like. And it sounds kind of um, uh, aggressive, what I'm about to say, but we literally look at all the couples in our life and say, who do we not want to invest in anymore? And we go through this process every, like I said, four or five years, and it's great. And the last time we did it recently was we eliminated 12 couples from our life. But the day after that was just freedom. And we do that with clients in the business. We do it with employees. We do it with uh, opportunities. Oftentimes, we're all chasing multiple opportunities. But you got to cleanse yourself and say, we're not going to chase these seven. We're just going to focus on these three going forward. And if you're not constantly cleaning out the closet of your life and your business, then you, there's no room, as I said, to insert success into a container that's already full. So that's my final thought. Uh, I very much look forward to seeing you, Fred, giving you a big Italian hug. Thanks, brother. And, uh, and meeting all your compadres over there. I understand there's another Italian brother coming, too. There is. Uh, I'm going to talk to him, too. Patrick right. Tempo, yeah. So uh, yeah. you guys have a big history. So it'll be fun to hang out. Yeah, he'll know if I'm there. He has to go on the little stage <laughs> yeah. in, in the in the other room. <laughs> he'll just be he'll just be on a mic, and we'll show him on video, like on a <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're making comments from the main stage. <laughs> did Did you remember the picture of his family at boot camp? Oh that was yeah, so man, funny. it was hilarious. So you guys have a great relationship. It's funny how you go back and forth. So it's going to be a great weekend, and looking forward to having you. All right. Thanks for having me and uh, talk to you soon. All right.